belief. And this goes into it, actually the evolution of human consciousness. And Terence McKenna was a good friend of mine. I love Terence. I especially loved him the last five years of his life because he made fun of himself so much. Terence, um, uh, people took Terence way too seriously in many levels, but as his brother Dennis, uh, which I think has been on your show. A couple times. Yeah, Dennis is a great, that guy. great ally, great scientist. But, you know, Dennis said even if 10% of what Terence said was true, it's, it's friggin' amazing. It's, and Terence and Dennis both came up with a stain, stoned ape theory. Now, it's not a theory, it's a hypothesis. A hypothesis is speculative, uh, but cannot necessarily be as not yet proven. A theory is a hypothesis that has been tested and proven with facts. So I disagree with them in saying it's not a theory, it's a hypothesis. But the hypothesis of the stone ape, uh, 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 of the stone ape which I think you've alluded to before, is that with climate change and as the savannas increase and our primate ancestors came out of the, out of the forest canopies, they're, they're tracking across the savannah. And if you're a hunter, what do you look? You look for footsteps and you look for scat. Uh, and the most significant fleshy mushroom going out of poop in, in Africa, hippopotamus, elephant, you know, uh, deer, antelope, et cetera, um, is Slossoby cubensis. It's a very large mushroom. You're hungry. You're with your clan. You consume it. And then 20 minutes later, you you're, are catapulted in this extraordinary experience. Psilocybin substitutes as serotonin becomes a better neurotransmitter, activates neurogenesis, it causes new neurons to form, new pathways of knowledge. So that's a stone date hypothesis, and it speaks to a mystery that the human brain, uh, basically the brain cavity doubled in size in about 2 million years. Some people say it's less, as two, uh, less than 200,000. Homo sapiens- Less than 200,000 years? Yeah. Homo sapiens arrived uh, 200,000 to 300,000 years ago. That's a big gap, right? It's a, it's a big gap. Well, the science is like that. So mm. you want to, you know, to be scientifically accurate here, I need to show the, the extreme margins of what's been estimated. So if we accept 2 million years that the, and it's shown in the fossil record, this is true, the oldest Homo sapiens fossils are 300,000 years old now. Um, but we have a subtle, suddenly doubling of the human brain. Um, and with that, our language centers increased our ability to prognosticate, to plan. Um, and there's no explanation for this uh, currently. And even though we may not be able to prove it, I ask people to suspend their disbelief for a second. Now think of this. Our primate ancestors are going across the savanna. They ingest these mushrooms as a clan. Massive input for anyone who's eaten these mushrooms. Huge amounts of data is coming in. Fractal patterns, geometrical you know, landscapes occur. Um, you have empathy. Uh, you have greater courage. You're fighting a saber-toothed saber, saber tiger. You know, one day you're, you have a fear of it. Uh, we know now from neurogenesis and the extinction of the fear response that has been clinically proven, psilocybin allows you to reset and have different neurological pathways to respond to fear, overcoming the fear of conditioned response, potentially PTSD, and there's a lot of research on this currently. So, but this wouldn't happen one time with one hominid group. It wouldn't happen two times, ten times. It happened millions and millions and millions and millions of times over millions and millions of years. This leads to what I think is called, uh, this should be called epigenetic neurogenesis. We know that there's a regeneration of neurons. We know that soul substitutes the serotonin. It opens the floodgates of the senses. You have a lot more data coming in. And we know that you have the extinction of the, of the fear response. So if you're the leader of your clan, you've had this traumatic uh, event, either war or cataclysm from earthquakes, whatever the case may be, or encounter a saber tooth tiger, whatever, if you're the leader of that clan and you can overcome your fear response, you have courage and you have empathy. Those are leadership skills. I think people should take note of it. People like to follow leaders who are courageous and yet kind, who they can trust. They'll have their best interests in mind. So I think this propelled I think it's a lot, it's a very good explanation. It's an unprovable hypothesis. But now we're at a junction and, for the and we're ready for the next quantum leap in human consciousness. I think psilocybin should be looked upon as a nootropic vitamin. And there's a huge amount of interest in this. Johns Hopkins University, as you probably well know, uh, New York University, UCLA, elsewhere in Europe, 
There's major clinical studies that have been conducted in the past two years showing exactly what I'm saying about overcoming fear response, neurogenesis, overcoming PTSD. This is now medically uh, quite seriously considered and something that I think that we should explore under controlled settings. I'm not into partying uh, with psilocybin mushrooms. Damn. <laughs> You're I going can, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand the Ari urge. Ari is going to be here in an hour and a half, and he's the creator of Shroom Fest. Uh -huh. He's going to be very upset with your idea that you shouldn't party with it. Well, I think there's greater benefit to well, yourself, I, I agree with yourself and, 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 and humanity. I think these are serious tools.